It's time for the Georgia State Sports Update. Hi again, Panther fans, and welcome to this week's show. Joined in studio by Georgia State's head basketball coach, Ron Hunter. And uh, coach, uh, the two Texas teams were in this past week. Texas State, Thursday night of last week. That goes in the win column. A little bit uh, tougher time with uh, UT Arlington on Saturday. But one and one at this point, 13 and eight overall in the season. Yeah, I mean, for us, that's, uh, that, that's not something we're accustomed to. But uh, uh, this kind of reminds me of uh, that, that first year with Marcus and, right. and TJ and RJ and and those inexperienced guys trying to learn how to win, especially when they're on the road and winning close games. And, and this group, uh, they're, they're, they're trying to figure it out. And so, uh, so some things we got to work on, but uh, we're 13 and 8. It's a lot better than 8 and 13, but uh, <laughs> uh, we just got to keep getting better. Well, as you and I were talking earlier uh, in terms of basketball IQ, it was a high IQ team a year ago. Yeah. And uh, really, this team kind of went through a little bit of a brain drain with, uh, with what you lost, the four seniors. And, you know, you're, you're back to uh, you and the coaching staff almost a little bit in the mode of teaching because there's some young, young guys in this ball club. Really, we were talking about it on the radio show that, that haven't played consistently at this level. Well, basketball IQ is, is almost identical to experience. Uh, I don't think that uh, Marcus and Chigi and RJ, that group, walked in with that. I think there were some experience and things they had to learn. Yeah. And because they learned it, they went through it. They got an NCAA tournament NIT appearance out of it. This group is the same thing. They're starting to figure it out. Six of our top nine guys really didn't even play for us last year. And so they're trying to figure out the system. They're trying to figure out their coach. They're trying to figure out how to win. And on top of that, the pressures that we've had of going to the tournament and, and winning back-to-back -back championships. So there's a lot thrown into that. And, uh, and again, to be 13 and 8, you know, again, there are a lot of people that like that. Our expectations are so high here for the basketball program that we've got to understand that sometimes it takes a little learning. So we still have got eight games to go, and so we'll see what happens. Let's talk a little bit about uh, Thursday night's game of last week, Texas State, 59-56. Uh, let me go ahead and say, you, I think members of the media pay more of attention to it than maybe you do, but congratulations on your 100th win just in the time here at Georgia State. You've got more than that overall in your coaching career. Just your 100th win uh, in the four and a half years you've been at Georgia State. Well, again, I think that's a, that's a testament. i got great assistants. I've said it before. I think I've got the top assistants in the country, and they've been with me the entire time. And then when you start thinking about the players that I've had, mm -hmm. uh, from the players that I took over when I first took the job here a few years ago until the guys that we've been able to recruit. So, uh, again, that's not a Ron Hunter award. That's more of a program award that we've been able to win 100 games that quickly. Um, so we must be doing something right. Well, you did it uh, on Thursday night of last week well, on the back of Marcus Kreider, career-high 24 points uh, mm -hmm. in leading Georgia State to the win over Texas State. Yeah, the ironic part of winning the 100th at that particular day <laughs> is that Marcus is in that first class with RJ and that group that we brought in, our first recruiting class. Right. Uh, so that was great to be able to win that 100 game with, and, and him have his best game of his career that night. So that meant a little bit more uh, for us then. You know, with Texas State, too, you go back to the game in San Marcos earlier this season. I mean, they came in, and I was fully expecting, yeah. as you guys were, it's going to be a low scoring game. Yeah. I mean, they just don't score yeah. a lot of points. And, you know, we're scoring in the mid to upper 60s, but they're, they're, they're right there near the bottom of the league in points per game. Yeah, it's funny how, you know, we, we talk about how great last year was, but last year we lost to Texas State at home and beat Arlington. So that was right. a split at home. And we did actually the exact same thing this year. Uh, we, we beat Texas State, but we lost to Arlington, and, uh, and that team still went on and won a, a, a championship. So uh, it's kind of eerie how that how I ended up working itself out. But, but Texas State, they do a great job defensively, and they, they, they really play to their strengths in that regard. And, and you know you're not going to score a lot on them. So right. you just have to be great defensively, and we were Thursday night. Did a good job in Amani Gant. You guys kind of hounded him defensively. And mm -hmm. the defense has been the strong point of this uh, Georgia State team this year. Held him just five points. He still had 11 boards. Yeah. But five points for their best player and one of the better players in the league says a lot. Well, we're playing well. Our defense is great. I mean, you know, again, we, we, I've said it before. Last year, we won an NCAA tournament game and only scored 56 points. Yeah. Uh, we won a conference championship game and scored 36 points. So, again, you know, to win championships and to win big in, Jan in February and March, you've got to be great defensively. And that's what was disappointing about the other night is we kind of we got away from who we were. And if you're going to win at this time of year, you've got to be really, really good defensively. 
All right, final score on Saturday of last week, uh, UT Arlington. UT Arlington came in here, and they, they, they kind of surprised me. The, without their best player, Kevin Irvy, who blew out his knee a few weeks ago and is out for the year, they still came in here on a four-game losing streak and scored 90 points in a 90-69 to win. You know, it's a team that we've actually struggled with since I've been here. Uh, we've actually beat them all four times, but three straight times we've played them, we were down 20 every time we played them. We just had a guy, Ryan Hare on RJ, that was able to come back and kind of withstand that. And this year we, we couldn't. They're a bad matchup because of their system and the way they play. And then uh, Saturday's game, before the game, I let Coach LeBerry be the defensive coach, and he gave up 90. So I'm going to take it back this year. <laughs> this week I'm going to take it back and see if we can kind of shut it down a little bit. We had three in double figures. Uh, Isaiah Williams yeah. led the way with 14. Kevin Ware had 12. Uh, Jeremy Hollowell still struggling a little bit, though. Yeah, I think we said he's 15 of 54 in, in, in his last two, in his last 50 attempts, and that's not going to get it done. He's got to be a better offensive player than that, and he really is. But he's pressing right now. He's trying to do everything too fast, and what it, now then is messing with him defensively. He played 25 minutes, I believe, the other night and didn't get a rebound. He's one of our leading rebounders, so that just shows you that. Uh, that he's struggling a little bit. So we got to do something, whether it's bring him off the bench or we got to do something to kind of help him with that. Because again, you know, he's trying to be the guy and it's hard to be that guy. Right. You, know, I, you know how my theory is, yep. everybody wants to be Batman, so it's <laughs> to be Batman. Right. You know, and that, that shows you how difficult what RJ really had to go through the last three years. And one of the reasons why he decided to go pro, because again, all the defenses, all the trick defenses, the best player, the scouting reports are all on you. Jeremy's never had to go through that before, and he's finding out how difficult that really is. Right, because I think a lot of folks came into the season this year off of everything that happened last year and just kind of put one and one together yeah. to make two and said, okay, well, you know, RJ and Ryan are gone. Well, now it'll be Kevin and Jeremy, and they'll just yeah. kind of pick up the slack production-wise on both ends of the floor, and we'll just keep moving forward. And it doesn't yeah. just necessarily go that way that easily. Yeah, and you wanted to, but those two guys are pros. One who left early and right. one who was a McDonald's All-American. And you just, at the mid-major level, you don't replace that overnight. And those guys you know, as, as, and, and they're doing the best they possibly can. Uh, but again, those guys were high level type of guys. And so, um, you know, mid-major players, when you lose them early uh, to the draft, you know, you're going to feel a sting to that. And that's happened everywhere. Creighton, if you look at what happened with Creighton, I mean, they go to the Sweet 16 and, and the coach's son, right. same deal. And, and again, they really kind of dropped off that following year just to replace that. So that's what we're going through a little bit right now, trying to figure out who's going to be Batman. I always like that, you know, I'm a Batman or Robin guy, but who's going to be Batman? So hopefully these last eight games, we'll find one. All right, last thing about UT Arlington, it was really second chance points. Yeah. They were very good taking advantage of everything that we laid out there and allowed them to, to take care, you know, to get. And that was the one thing that, that uh, you know, I, I talked to the guys about today and, and after the game was that that's a toughness deal, and that's something we can't have. They, they just out-toughed us in that regards, and, and we're not going to have that. And so uh, we kind of laid back, and, and, you know, even Jeremy, I talked to him about, you know, I don't, you can go 0 for 50, but you can't go 0 for on the rebound. Right. Not the minutes that you're playing at 6'8". That, that, that just can't happen. So that's the mentality he's got to change, and he's got to think more defensively on, and rebounding instead and forget the scoring part right now. All right, again, it was a split with the Texas teams. Texas State was a win. And it was a loss to a UT Arlington on Saturday right now. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from those two games this week at the Georgia State Sports Arena.
right, we're back with Coach Hunter looking uh, at some highlights there from uh, the, the uh, Texas State-Texas Arlington game. And uh, right now talking a little bit about what's coming up. We've got uh, a road game at Troy uh, on the back end of uh, the two Alabama games. There's South Alabama and then Troy. And then Arkansas Little Rock here. Already seen Little Rock once, but let's talk a little bit about Troy. Troy's another one of those teams. You know, we got a big lead on them when they played in Atlanta. Uh, I think held them to, uh, what, 19 first-half points. Uh, when the two teams played in Atlanta, they came back and had a 49-point, if I remember correctly, yeah. second half. They gave us a run for, for our money. We're able to hold on and beat them. Yeah, and they're playing right now. They're playing desperate because they've got, they're trying to get into the conference tournament. And yep. those teams are dangerous because, again, another loss here or there, and they're probably done for the season. And so when you're playing those type of teams, you've got to make sure you're ready to play. They just upset Arkansas State this, uh, this past weekend. Uh, and, again, they were, they were spreading the ball around, shooting a three. And so, again, we've got to go into the mindset. We've got to really defend them. We can't let them get to those open shots. We've got to really take away some passing lanes and, and just really make it tough on them offensively. If you can do that, then they struggle because on the other end, you'll get whatever you need. And you get the two bookends with these games that we're talking about. You get the last place team in the Sun Belt Conference in Troy. And then you turn around and welcome the first place team in the Sunbelt yeah. Conference into the sports arena. Talking about Troy again, uh, as you mentioned, they're fighting to get into the conference tournament. Teams that play like that, they play with nothing to lose. Yeah. Uh, and Troy has been playing like that now for the last few weeks, knowing that they were going to be battling just to just even get to New Orleans. Yeah, it's funny because when you you know we we the last couple of years we've been in the position with Little Rock where all of a sudden you got the big lead and 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 now all of a sudden that pressure comes because now in the back of your mind you're thinking about the NCAA tournament. Yeah. And so you know you start to worry about a lot of things you start to play a little tighter uh, which is what we did two years ago when we lost in the championship game so uh, I think our guys will be more ready for that I got to get them ready for you again when you're playing a team that's trying to get into the tournament versus a team that's you know right now and sitting in first place so uh, we got to be ready we just got to make sure we get ourselves ready we got a chance that we can still be in the top three and so you know that's 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 a goal of ours because we want to get that by so right now we've got to win every game that we possibly can all right, and uh, the next home game for Georgia State, again, it will be the Trojans of Arkansas, Little Rock. I don't want to call them the surprise of the Sun Belt. I think some teams, some folks mm -hmm. saw this coming on last year. New coach. Again, it reminded me a lot of your first year at yeah. Georgia State. Uh, but right now, they're they're just, you know, top the league. They're I think they're 20-2 and two overall. Yeah, he's got them playing very well right now, and they're playing with a lot of confidence. And again, you know, when you in basketball especially, you know, when you get that confidence rolling. Mm -hmm. uh, we played them the other day, and, and it really felt like we played them well. Uh, we had that three-point lead with five minutes to go, and again, when we needed that chance, we had on five straight possessions, and we couldn't score on those possessions. And so uh, I think it's going to be a great game. Uh, we're looking forward to it. I would love to have an opportunity to play them in the conference tournament. Uh, again, because I've been on that side of where the pressure just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Yep. And for the first time at Georgia State, <laughs> it's not everybody attacking us, trying right. to come and get us. And so, um, you know, we can come in and play that underdog, that underdog role. So I'm really looking forward to this game. All right. You ready for some questions from the Panther fans? Sure. Let's see what they got. All right. Our cameras have crisscrossed the campus of Georgia State as they do each and every week. And right now we have questions from the fans for head coach Ron Hunter. Hi, this is Tiffany Turner here at Georgia State University, and I have a question for Coach. Coach, you've been in the coaching profession for a long time. What is the hardest thing about coaching a student athlete? I've been coaching for a very long time. The, diff the, the difficult in coaching is that I've coached young men from the 90s, 2000s, and now to 2016. So there's been a, a, a three different generations of, uh, of young men. But uh, the hard part is uh, understanding their music, <laughs> to be honest with you. So I'm kind of an old school guy. I know the ba basketball is always going to be basketball, uh, but social media and the music is something that uh, I'll struggle with. My name is Amy Stearns. I'm a journalism major here at Georgia State, and I've got a question for you, Coach. How much time during a week do you spend with your student athletes that isn't game time? I spend right now, 90% uh, of my job is is working off the court with the guys. You know, I, I tell people that want to be coaches all the time, I only X and O about 10% of my job. 90% of the other things, whether they have to go to class, recruiting, uh, a lot of the off-court deals, I've got to be coach, teacher, pastor, got to be a little bit of everything when you're a head basketball coach at the co collegiate level. Hi, I'm Maya Gordon. I'm a journalism major here at Georgia State University. Hey coach, I hear you like to play golf. Which do you like best, a half-court game or a afternoon of golf? What a great question. Um, I should actually be a professional golfer right now. I think Tiger Woods and myself, we're really about par uh, at each other right now. I think that uh, when I'm done coaching, I'm going on the seniors tour. Uh, right now, my handicap's a 27, but I'm going to work to get it down to a 7. And that's a joke. 
<laughs> All right, good questions this week from the uh, Georgia State faithful the fans. Coach, great having you here, and uh, let's go get some wins, and we'll see you here next week. All right, Dave, let's get a couple wins, buddy. All right, I want to thank head coach Ron Hunter with us in studio here for this week's Georgia State Sports Update. Busy week at Georgia State as it is each and every week, and time now to take a look at what's coming up on the schedule. On the schedule this week in Georgia State Athletics, you can spend Valentine's Day with men's tennis. They'll play two matches, 12 noon against Georgia Tech in Atlanta, and then at 6 p.m. they'll take on Emory, also in Atlanta. Coming up on Wednesday, February the 17th, softball gearing up. They're going to host Georgia Tech at the Bob Heck Softball Complex, first pitch at 5 p.m. Men's and women's basketball on Thursday, February the 18th. It'll be women's basketball hosting Arkansas Little Rock at the GSU Sports Arena. They'll tip it off at 5 p.m., followed by a 7.30 p.m. tip-off for the men's basketball game, Georgia State and Arkansas Little Rock. An all-day event on Friday, February 19th, softball's Panther Invitational. That'll be out at the Heck Softball Complex at Panthersville. Also on Friday at 4 p.m., baseball going to open the season against Western Michigan at the Georgia State Baseball Complex. And to close it out on Friday, February the 19th, women's tennis hosting Florida International here in Atlanta at 4 p.m. And that's what's going on this week in Georgia State Athletics. Back in studio on the Georgia State Sports Update, we've been talking basketball with head coach Ron Hunter. And right now, pleased to welcome in assistant football coach, guy that coaches the linebackers. That's P.J. Volker. P.J., great to have you in studio. My pleasure. And Thanks the, for having me. Yeah, and on the show this week. And, boy, you guys can finally breathe a little bit of a sigh of relief because, uh, you know, the recruiting, even though recruiting is, is pretty much a year-round job, signing days behind us. But let's talk about a little bit uh, about recruiting. Recruiting is really it's like selling the program. It's like being a salesman 365 days a year. Certainly. I mean, that's how we, we view it is what we have to do is sell Georgia State and our program and all the different things that we're trying to do uh, year round with our program. And, you know, being a top research institution, being a, a school that just purchased Turner Field, uh, making it to a bowl game for the first time in school history, it was a heck of a lot easier than it has been the last two years. Sure, a lot easier, too, when you've won four in a row and the school earned its first bowl bid. I mean, that has to go a, a long way in helping you sell the program and really sell the experience of coming to Georgia State University in downtown Atlanta to play collegiate football. Without a doubt. Uh, probably the biggest thing was as soon as that bowl game was over, uh, as soon as that, that game with Georgia Southern was over, we went out on the road. Right. And just the reception we had in the high schools, you know, from the secretaries to teachers coming out of their offices, all things like that. Every assistant coach had a, a little bit different story, but it was all about the excitement about Georgia State football. So the way it's broken down for the folks that maybe don't follow recruiting on a day-in, day-out, week-in, week-out basis, uh, Coach Miles signs the various assistant coaches with a section of the state or certain high schools in a section of the state so that... You've you, got that right. So that you guys really are dealing with a certain number of high school coaches that allow you to begin to get familiar with those guys and get to know those guys and their programs. I, I think probably the biggest thing that you have to understand about recruiting is it's about relationships and developing real rich relationships, whether it's with the high school coaches, whether it's with the, the prospective student athletes, whether it's with uh, uh, their parents, uh, grandparents, all those things. It's all about developing relationships. And what we do is we break down the state into nine different areas so each assistant coach has uh, a piece of Georgia uh, mm -hmm. Georgia is just such a fertile state when it comes to recruiting that we need to get in every high school every spring and, and find guys that uh, that fit our program and what we're looking for all right so you've been with coach miles now for a few years uh, and coming down here to Atlanta uh, from the state of Indiana I don't know about Indiana but signing day in the south is almost like a national holiday you almost expect all the banks and the state offices <laughs> to be to be closed so that they can announce who the, uh, the signees are for mm -hmm. the various colleges how have you found the experience uh, now that you're down here in the Atlanta area with Georgia State and you know have, have seen how it's done down south uh, it, it's exciting <laughs> It's always exciting for us because as a coaching staff, it, it just sort of puts the, the cherry on top of all your hard work. Right. And, and when you see, we've all had those horror stories where on signing day something doesn't happen and it's a, it's a nervous time, making sure that all those scanned copies come back or that those faxes still use the, the old fax <laughs> machine for whatever reason, as long as those come back through, it uh, gets a little nervous for you. But uh, just the excitement of it down here. I think adding the College Football Hall of Fame and the things that they do for our young men 
um, that are signing with us, just bringing in the different counties and the excitement that adds, and then just seeing all those things all over the AJC. It's just, it's an exciting time for everybody. I know I keep using exciting, but that, it's the true sense of the word. And certainly, as you look at each signing class, you want to talk a little bit about players that can come in and make maybe not an immediate impact, but guys that come in and during the course of the season are going to be impact guys once they get acclimated to playing. You're coaching Certainly. on the defensive side. I see you out there every day at practice uh, during, the, during the season. Uh, from a defensive standpoint, um, names of guys that uh, you guys were able to sign this year that might be able to come in and, and make a, an impact this, this coming season. Sure. I think probably the biggest thing on both sides of the ball that you're always worried about is, is the line play. And, and Coach Lapano touched on it when we had our, our signing day event. We have very educated fans here at Georgia State, mm -hmm. and they know that everything starts up front, both sides of the ball. And for us, defensively, you talk about defense winning championships. You just saw that on the Super Bowl this past week, right. uh, the way th those guys got after it. You talk about a guy like Clifford Amazan uh, up front, uh, coming from Gwinnett County. He's a guy that is big, 6'2", 300 plus pounds and can really move. And then you got Big T, uh, and uh, Big T, he's a guy that we came across late in the, the signing process, uh, the recruiting process, and he's a guy that, again, he's going to come in in January, and he's a guy that up front keeps guys off backers, and those guys can really run and make plays and, and aggravate people up front. I was talking to Coach Miles, and he was uh, kind of running down a list of what he thought might be impact players since you coach linebackers. You know, unfortunately, don't, don't we all wish that Joe Peterson had another season? Uh, you were able to surround him with some more really good linebackers. Unfortunately, this was his senior year. Um, one of the names that he threw out was Javante Lane out of Sandy Creek High School uh, south of the city. Javante's making an impact already. He's working out with Coach Holsopel, and we just get great reviews from everything that he's doing uh, in the workout room, uh, on the field, just training and getting ready for, for this upcoming season. I'm really excited about seeing him in the spring. What about the defensive line? I th you, and you may have mentioned a, a name or two, but as you said, offensive and defensive lines, I mean, they, what do they say? Games are won in the trenches. Exactly. And if you look at Georgia State football this past season and look at those last four games, now granted, taking nothing away from Nick Arbuckle and the, and the 4,000 plus yards that he was able to throw for this year, but that defensive unit all of a sudden rose up and played outstanding football, and there was no better example of that than the game at Georgia Southern. Certainly. I, I think you talk about defense winning championships and, and linemen win games. Well, the common denominator there is the defensive line. And Coach Samuel does a phenomenal job with those guys. You've got Shawanye Lawrence, Tevin Jones, you've got yeah, Jalen, uh, just making a lot of plays up there. And then not to mention McKendy Cher Cherador, who's a mm -hmm. total game wrecker uh, when he's playing at his highest level. I mean, he's a guy that NFL scouts are coming in and trying to see uh, on a daily basis when they can. And I know that obviously you're on the defensive side, but uh, Connor Manning's gotten a, a little bit of notoriety since transferring in from the University of Utah. He's got some big shoes to fill with <laughs> Nick Arbuckle, been Certainly. a senior. You know, he transferred from Utah. didn't play a whole lot at Utah, but it's an opportunity. And as Coach Miles said with Amir and Aaron here, it's going to be a good battle uh, to win that starting quarterback job, uh, you know, before we get to next year. Certainly. I think... Whenever you look at a class, you're going to look at the quarterback. Uh, you know, that's the guy that has the spotlight on him. And, and Connor is the, the specific one in this class. And Amir was in the class uh, when we first got here. And then Aaron was in last year's class. So it's going to be a heck of a battle this spring. I know Coach Eward uh, does a phenomenal job, probably as good as anybody in the country. And I know he's, uh, he's got his hands full uh, trying to get those guys to, uh, to compete and fill Nick's, Nick's shoes as we move forward. And lastly, uh, w the Panthers were getting better as the season rolled along once the injuries kind of got behind us. But running the football, uh, a lot of guys coming back, just about everybody is back. Mm -hmm. uh, but Darius Stubbs out of Luella High School is a name that, is kinda, that Coach Miles pointed out. So it might be one of those guys that can come in and, and make an impact this coming season. I mean, you see Darius, I mean, he, he looks like a tailback. He runs like a tailback. He does everything that you want a tailback to do. He's going to block at protection. He can catch the ball out of the backfield. He's got explosive speed. Uh, I got an opportunity to see him live uh, when he was committed to another school when uh, we, we obviously signed Terry Thomas mm -hmm. on the defensive line as well, who's an outstanding player. But both those guys are high school teammates. And, and I was down there watching Terry <laughs> and noticed Darius out there just making play after play after play. Uh, so it was, a, it, it was one of those deals where we're excited to have him. I'm glad we don't have to go up against him. So you end up getting a, you two where you thought you might only get one out of Luella High School. So Exactly. It and, and it worked out well for us. <laughs> 
All right, you ready to take some questions from the uh, Panther football faithful? Can't wait. All right, and right now let's take some questions from the Georgia State football fans for assistant coach and the linebacker coach, P.J. Volker. Hi, my name is Amarnique Jones, and I'm a journalism major. Coach, I have a question for you. Now that National Signing Day is over for 2016, how soon is it before you start recruiting players for 2017? Well, that, that's going on year-round. It's important for us to know kids in our area in terms of our coaching staff year-round. Now, this spring when we go out, we won't be worried about the 2016 class anymore. It'll be just about really zeroing in on those 2017 kids, but we already have those things working. We're going to have a couple junior days here on campus uh, to go watch some basketball games and get those guys to, to know a little bit more about our program here in February. My name is Taylor Brownlee, and I'm a journalism major at Georgia State. Coach, this is the second straight school you've coached with Trent Miles. Why did you decide to follow him to Georgia State? And what is something that our fans might not know about him? Well, I, I think the reason I, I followed him here to Georgia State was the chance to build something special. Uh, I came in there at Indiana State on his last three years and, and was part of all the winning seasons that we had there. Uh, obviously, coming here and get a chance to build a program uh, was something that was incredibly exciting for me. And now, in terms of Coach Miles and knowing something about him, uh, he is a big-time family man. I know he says that, and some people say that, but don't really mean it. He truly is. Uh, he let me leave being the recruiting coordinator. I missed uh, one of our big recruiting weekends uh, because my father was ill. I uh, had an opportunity to do that. Uh, but he's a big-time family man. His kids are always around. And then probably most interesting fact is he knows everybody. So in, in terms of the coaching profession, maybe you hear about the, the six or seven degrees of separation. I think in the coaching world he might be two or three degrees of separation with about every coach nationally. Coach, what do you enjoy doing in your free time? And do you get any free time during the season? No, I don't get any free time during the season. And uh, when I do have free time, I love to spend it with my family, my, my wife, Mandy, and my uh, beautiful daughter, Rosie. Good questions this week, and this time for assistant football coach and the linebackers coach, P.J. Volker. And of course, you don't get a lot of free time, and the free time you get Look where you are. You're here in the studio with us on the TV show. Don't want to be anywhere else. <laughs> PJ, great having you here. And you guys, great job with all the uh, recruits. Looking forward to uh, fall practice coming up. And I should say spring practice coming up and then fall practice. <laughs> It'll be here before we know it. All right. I want to thank the entire crew. Ron Hunter is with us today. We've been talking to PJ Volker. We'll be here next week. And for the entire crew, I'm Dave Cohen. Thanks for watching the Georgia State Sports Update.